Lost Characters. These are characters that have been abandoned by their creators, ranging from obscure to, hey, I remember this guy, what happened to him? Such as with the case with Apu from The Simpsons, or even the Kanye West bear, which has also been lost to time, and the forgotten character of Pink Guy from Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, I'm Zeep. Your favorite YouTuber of all time, get this video to 5,000 likes if you want a sequel to this, and let's get straight into it. But first, ladies and gentlemen, a word from our sponsor, Cook Unity. Cook Unity is the first chef-to-consumer platform delivering freshly prepared, pre-selected meals right to your door weekly. Made up of over 70 chefs who believe that great food should be for everyone. These inventive meals are made fresh every day in regional micro kitchens, not warehouse production facilities. The subscription is super flexible and you can pause, skip weeks, or cancel at any time. Cook Unity chefs offer up a wide range of meals with over seven different dietary preference filters, including vegan, paleo, and gluten-free options. Tonight, me and my family had three different meals. I had the turkey bolognese lasagna made by Dustin Taylor, and the meat was super good. Very cheesy, and very epic. I also had a try of the rustic style French beef ragu. Oh, and the pasta, it was on point. Made by Cedric Nicholas. Not to mention the chicken pesto penne with ricotta. Made by our boy Dustin Taylor yet again. The chicken was amazing. Go to cookunity.com slash zeepsterd50 or click the link in the description below and use my code zeepsterd50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals. You need to try these out by yourself. They're great. Thanks to Cook Unity for sponsoring this video. A poo from The Simpsons. You know, whenever I get a slushie at my local convenience store, I think of one character in particular. Someone so nice and hilarious. A poo. And I don't think I'm alone when it comes to this. In terms of characters outside of The Simpsons family, A poo is one of the most iconic ones. I would go as far as to say he's as iconic as, say, Mo or Chief Wiggum. A poo was born in India. And while there, he befriended Paul and Linda McCartney, eventually describing himself as the fifth Beatle. From Apu's upbringings, it was established that he was incredibly nice. Eventually, Apu took that hospitality with him when he went to America, and where he took up a job working at the Quickie Mart to repay his student loans that he had made when he went to college. He would later marry his wife, Manjula, and eventually have eight kids of his own. Apu was voiced by Hank Azaria, who, for nearly 30 years, loved voicing Apu. Hello! Welcome to the Quickie Mart. One of the producers for The Simpsons had asked Hank if he would try an Indian accent when it came to voicing the character, to which Hank obliged. <gasps> Jury duty. Oh, today I am truly an American citizen. Oh. <sighs> Throughout the 1990s and 2000s, Apu would become one of the most prominent and welcoming characters of the entire Simpsons cast. He would appear alongside Homer and Skinner, being a part of the band The B-Sharps, which is actually one of my favorite Simpsons episodes, but also in this episode Apu is advised to not mention what his heritage is, even going as far as having to change his name all to avoid his complicated last name. Isn't it true that you're really an Indian? By the many arms of Vishnu, I swear it is a lie. Eventually, Apu becomes a legal U.S. citizen, in one of my favorite jokes of all time. What was the cause of the Civil War? Actually, there were numerous causes. Aside from the obvious schism between abolitionists and anti-abolitionists, economic factors, both domestic and international, played a significant... Hey, hey. Yeah. Just, just say slavery. Slavery it is, sir. It's established in the show that Apu is smart. He has a doctorate in computer science and a man of many talents. I do like to cook. I'm not much of a talker, but I love to listen. And in my leisure time, I like to build furniture and then to have a discussion about where it could be placed in a room. It shouldn't be said, but Apu is one of the most level-headed characters in the entire show. The contrast here is, of course, Homer Simpson, who's a big, bald idiot, or say other secondary characters like Chief Wiggum, who is, although nice, also isn't too smart as well. It's not to say Apu is always nice. There are moments where he's angry. There are other moments where he could be a deeply flawed character, as with the case of him committing infidelity against his wife, twice. But throughout all of this is what makes Apu such an interesting character. I wouldn't say he's one note, but a complex individual as all individuals are. 
For years, fans of The Simpsons loved the poo. This was all until the bombshell documentary, The Problem with the Poo, which released at the end of 2017. Created by Hari Kondaboli, who grew up watching The Simpsons as a first-generation Indian, the documentary paints a picture of a poo as a harmful stereotype that has perpetuated hate. The documentary is controversial, even to this day, but this documentary is the reason why a poo has been removed from The Simpsons. Of course, it wasn't instantaneous, as the years following the documentary the Simpsons try to defend themselves in their beloved Apu. One of the criticisms against the documentary have to do with the fact that Kondabolu cherry picks examples of Apu on The Simpsons as being harmful. He tries to describe Apu as a one note character when, as I've established before, he's so much more than a one note character. Now, I'm not trying to downplay Harry's assessment on Apu. I do understand there's an anger when it comes to Apu's accent, but Harry tries to spin Apu as a character who is made out of mean spiritedness. It is in this regard where we have to keep in mind cultural representation in our TV shows, especially in cartoons. The Simpsons is a representation of what America is, the melting pot. It's all a complete exaggeration. Homer, who represents the typical middle-aged adult man in America, of course isn't the complete representation of what America actually is. He's exaggerated. That's the point. He's a cartoon. You see, I'm a first-generation Hispanic. Both my parents are from Mexico. I see someone like Bumblebee Man, and I realize he is an exaggerated stereotype. But yet, I still loved Bumblebee Man. Ay, ay, ay! No me gusta! <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm really not comfortable with this, Ethan. Stereotypes? They suck. But I think The Simpsons do way more and are actually able to craft characters who are endearing and well-respected, more than just their basic characteristics. One of the other critiques that I find from this documentary is Harry describing that because of a poo, he was bullied in school, which sucks, you know? But at the end of the day, I don't think that's the fault of the show, but more the fault of the bully who tries to use a poo as a way to try and disparage them as an individual. Which is a shame because Apu's an awesome character. I mean, in the show, everyone loves Apu. The women can't get enough of him. The townsfolk there, they love him. Inviting him on a bowling team. Always consulting him for advice. I've said it a million times in this video. Apu is so much more than whatever Harry painted him as. Mamma mia! Hitsman! Yeehaw! Arr, me mateys. Arr. Oh, they begged me to join their team. Begged me. Ah. <sighs> So with all these arguments I've presented to you, here's what happened. The documentary came out. A couple months later, a Simpsons episode would come out, titled No Good Read Goes Unpunished, and where Marge and Lisa are having a conversation about a children's book Marge loved when she was a kid, which would now be considered offensive. Well, what am I supposed to do? It's hard to say. Something that started decades ago and was applauded and inoffensive is now politically incorrect. What can you do? Some things will be dealt with at a later date. If at all. The Simpsons' overall response was essentially, what can they do at this point? They had done everything within their power to make Apu much more than just a stereotype. Hell, even the actor for Apu even offered to step aside and was worried that he was causing harm by reinforcing stereotypes and that his goal was to listen to those affected and to do whatever it takes to make those comfortable. You know, the idea that uh, anybody was young or old, past or present, uh, was bullied or teased uh, based on the character of Apu, it just really makes me sad. It was certainly not my intention. I wanted to spread laughter and joy with this character. And the idea that it's, you know, brought pain and suffering in any way, uh, that it was used to marginalize people, it's, just, it's upsetting, Gen genuinely. Hank Azaria's last appearance as Apu would be this line right here. She sounds like a wonderful kid. Now please say goodbye to her forever. <laughs> Take a peasant, leave a peasant. Since then, Apu has basically been erased from the show, making very minor appearances in the background and essentially having no episodes surrounding him anymore, which is a depressing fate for a Simpsons character who was predominantly there. I don't believe Apu will ever go back to being the dominant character he once was. In this mind, Apu isn't lost in terms of how we've defined lost in the past. I would say himself as a character is doomed to the times he unfortunately found himself in. Pink Guy I'm about to tell you one of the funniest stories of all time. So it's the far off year known as 2014 and Five Nights at Freddy's 2 had just come out. I mean guys, this was a big deal. PewDiePie was reacting to it, Marky Moo was reacting to it. Hell, I wouldn't even be surprised if Obama, who was president at the time, was reacting to it as well. 
And alongside all of this, were so many theories questioning who's in charge of all these murders that were happening at all these Five Nights at Freddy's locations. See, around the period of 2014 to 2015, we liked real concrete answers surrounding FNAF lore. I mean, this was around the same time period where the purple guy looked like this. This either brings back great memories for people or terrible memories. Right, so to understand pink guy, you must understand purple guy. In the original FNAF trilogy, Purple Guy was presented in cutscenes, walking around, killing kids, and stuffing their bodies into animatronics. Now before such a thing as William Afton, Purple Man was theorized to be anyone, really. People thought Purple Guy was the phone guy in a wicked twist. There's another theory that suggested that Purple Guy was actually a tragic character. Enter Pink Guy. Pink Guy was first introduced in a cutscene for Five Nights at Freddy's 2 and where he steps out of a purple car and quickly unalives someone. Pink Man is not an employee of Five Nights at Freddy's. This murder forces the already small Five Nights at Freddy's restaurant to close down. Eventually years pass by and a new one is made. It is established in the series that Purple Man has a couple children. However, one day, the oldest child of his goes too far and sticks the youngest child into an animatronic, in where the boy is bitten and later killed. Eventually, Pink Guy, who was able to avoid any repercussions for killing the child earlier, lands a job at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. Late into the hours of one night, Pink Man lures four children and slaughters them. Police investigate the incident and lack any evidence to incriminate Pink Guy. Purple Guy, who's reeling from the death of his son, and also the incidents that have occurred at his restaurants, goes berserk. Why does this keep happening to him? Is there some sort of guy with a sick twisted humor who's trying to drive him insane? Pink Guy, the psychopath, begins to toy with the animatronics, even sticking the bodies of the children into the animatronics, while also avoiding any capture from authorities. While Pink Guy is toying with one of the animatronics one day, he is followed by Bonnie into a room. It is there where Bonnie lashes out and kills Pink Guy. Pink Guy is then put in a suit known as Shadow Bonnie. Meanwhile, Purple Guy, overwhelmed by anger, heads to the restaurant one day late into the night, only to find that the spirits of the children who are now in the suits are after him. Why him though? He didn't kill them. Perhaps they're just bloodthirsty. Purple Guy tries to run around, to hide. Eventually he hides into Springtrap, one of the animatronics that's laying there in the room. But once he's inside the suit, the springs lock in, killing Purple Guy. So that is the tragic death of Purple Guy. A man who wallowed around, plagued by the deaths that affected his life, only to meet his due to the hands of Pink Guy. Crazy story, right? Based on just one or two images of Pink Guy that appeared in the video games. Well, I have one more thing to tell you. It didn't happen that way. Pink Guy was a character made up by fans over this one image right here of Pink Guy exiting a purple car. One would be able to suggest, eh, he looks kind of purple here, right? Maybe like mildly pink, but not completely. Yeah, that one mild color right over here was enough to create multiple theories. This is what I'm getting at. There was never a Pink Guy. If we look at the sprite minigames, we see that the sprites are constantly changing. Purple Guy's sprite is no exception to this. The reason why Pink Guy's car was purple was to try and differentiate Pink Guy from the purple car or else he would have blended in. Official canon tells us that Pink Guy never existed. He was just a different shade of purple. Of course, this is rich to say now that we have a clearer story. Back then, things were super different. FNAF lore even suggested that Pink Guy and Purple Guy were even brothers. That Pink Guy's name was, say, Billy Afton or whatever. Back then, people sympathized with Purple Guy. But also back then, people drew Purple Guy as your classic Tumblr stereotype. Which, there's no shame in, it's just what things were back then. We could look back at it and think it's hilarious. Especially given the context of a movie where he's just an old guy. When it comes to a game like Five Nights at Freddy's, every single detail imaginable was put under a microscope which fed into the community and led to constant discussion. Now, Pink Guy is a character deemed as a bad dream, as one who should never be brought up. However, to those who thought there was a Pink Guy, I don't blame you, because how could we know any better? The Kanye West Dropout Bear There are many things you can say about Kanye West. Talented, crazy, one of the most bizarre human beings to ever exist. Although Kanye can be described as many things now, we can't forget about how he was viewed 20 years ago. Unlike many of the rappers who first came on the scene in the mid-2000s, who were under the influence of gangster rap, Kanye was seen as a rapper who was more down-to-earth. I mean, just look at the themes of College Dropout, and where he describes education, themes of racism, family, all of this in his first incredible record. 
Of course, an album like this needed a cover that would catch everyone's attention. When it came to the photo shoot of College Dropout, the idea of the bear being the mascot of the entire record wasn't planned. In fact, the mascot costume was found while they were doing the photo shoot for this record. Kanye and the photographers thought the bear fit with the theme of the record. It was there that he took photos of Kanye in the suit, celebrating school spirit. Thus, the iconography of College Dropout and the iconography of the College Trilogy. Graphic designer Sam Hansen drew the bear with his first drawn appearance being for the cover art of Kanye West's debut single, Through the Wire. Amazing song, still love it to this day. It's crazy, right? Because when you think of rappers of this era, compared to Kanye, who's rapping about college education, there's no intimidation here. It just looks like a giant teddy bear. I would argue that the bear was what made Kanye accessible to millions of fans. The dropout bear isn't limited to just the album cover though. He also appears in the music video for the song The New Workout Plan, which is once again one of the best songs on the record. This video has always been funny to me because there's a section of the music video that has a Donald Trump cameo, and this video was made in 2004, 14 years before the 2018 incident. But anyways, in the music video, the dropout bear works out, he even tackles a woman, and he also poses for the camera like a million times, and it's awesome. And for some reason, what looks to be the Chinese communist flag is in the background as well. When it came to Kanye's next record, Laid Registration in 2005, the dropout bear was redesigned. This time he's wearing a Letterman jacket, ushering into the doors of Princeton University. It's here where I think there's a story going on when it comes to the dropout bear. The first album cover has him looking down as if he's unconfident, probably the new freshman on a big campus, and in late registration, he's the big man on campus. However, if you look at the bonus images that came out alongside late registration, we can see that the bear is sitting by himself, or studying by himself, still hard at work at trying to get that degree. It's obvious, but the bear represents Kanye. If college dropout is seen as Kanye's freshman year, aka Kanye's beginning of his career, then late registration is delving into the world of fame and trying to maintain it. I think what adds to this is the ad for late registration. The bear is so huge, implying that Kanye has become so huge as well. By the way, as a side note, the late registration ads were phenomenal. It really hyped up the album, but not only that, there was also a Pepsi slash Kanye ad created during this time, and that itself gives me goosebumps because there's so much nostalgia attached to it. The themes of late registration are consistent as well. Not only does Kanye still retrospect about the past, as with Hey Mama, he is also able to celebrate what he has now as with the album closer, Celebration. In fact, the creative director for this record, Luis Morano, crafted a canon reason on why the bear would always be late for every class. It was because the bear would be daydreaming about fame. He would get so sidetracked, he would start failing his classes. If this were to keep up, he would have to be dropping out. But he didn't. And that's where Kanye's third record, Graduation, comes into the bear's story. During the development of Graduation, Kanye West collaborated with a Japanese artist by the name of Takashi Murakami, who oversaw the art direction of the entire third record. When it comes to art, Takashi is known as the Andy Warhol of Japan. The design of Kanye's third album cover is surrealist in nature and a striking contrast between the two previous albums. At this point in Graduation, Kanye has it all. After hit after hit, Graduation only continues that streak with singles such as Stronger, The Good Life, Flashing lights? I mean, it really does have it all. What preluded graduation was controversy surrounding Kanye, which helped propel this album to multi-platinum status. Yes, he may have said that controversial George W. Bush line. And yes, people were gearing up for Kanye to do something crazy if he didn't win a Grammy Award. This all influenced Kanye's attitude throughout this record. He felt as if he graduated from all of this, that despite people doubting him, he succeeded. As for the dropout bear in the cover, we see him ascending from his school to continue to succeed after education. The music video for the first song on the album, Good Morning, also exemplifies this. We see the bear waking up on his graduation day. No longer the college dropout bear, but the graduated bear. The bear is also displayed as more colorful now displayed in cell shaded animation alongside these party glasses that promote this futuristic feel. The bear is way beyond confident and truly believes that he's made it. No more school, whatever he does next, he's gonna do a good ass job at. And that was the basis of Kanye's next record. After graduation, good ass job. All of this was going to happen until, well, Kanye's mom passed away. Not only that, but him and his fiance had broken it off as well. 
It was at this moment where the dropout bear no longer represented Kanye. He was going through many personal issues that the idea of finishing his concept album series fell more to the side. In reaction to all this crisis, Kanye West's next record after graduation was 808's and Heartbreak, a record dealing with loss, grief, and a striking contrast of what came before. In the records that came afterwards, the graduation bear was forgotten about. He appeared as a cameo for an alternate cover for Kanye's fifth record, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, which was a record that served as a reaction to all the negative press he was receiving after interrupting Taylor Swift at the 2009 Music Awards. As you can see in the cover, the bear doesn't look welcoming anymore. He's a horrifying depiction of what he once was, angry at whatever the world threw at him after graduation. I think it's fitting that the bear looks like this after entering the adult world, no longer confined on a college campus, experiencing the horrors and realities of what the world throws at you. For eight years, this was the last official documentation of the dropout bear. Kanye's career would of course continue becoming more outlandish as it went on. The bear no longer represented who he was. When he went on to the record Yeezus, or even say Life of Pablo, the bear was thrown to the side yet again. But here's the thing, the Kanye West bear would appear one more time. In 2018, in reaction to Kanye West's collaborative album with Kid Cudi, known as Kid See Ghost, the pair decided to go meet up with Takashi Murakami once again to create a TV show based on Kid See Ghost. The animation actually looked super sick, and it was a great throwback to graduation. In the beginning of the preview, we see the bear and Kid Cudi's fox exiting a school bus, which implies this is like an origin story for the dropout bear. There's like this all-powerful tree villain who tries to rain havoc on Cudi and the bear. And for two minutes, the bear and fox just scream and grunt with no spoken lines whatsoever. It's like all over the place, but it's pretty charming. It's kind of cool. It really makes no sense. And much like many of Kanye's other projects, nothing really came out of this. Many would think this would be the end of the dropout bear. But here's the thing. It's not. Although Kanye hasn't mentioned the dropout bear in recent memory, his daughter, who's been at the forefront of many recent Kanye projects, has acknowledged the Kanye West dropout bear, even dressing as the bear for Halloween recently. There's much to say about Kanye that's completely outlandish and berserk, but when it comes to that college dropout bear, many just remember the good times and try to acknowledge that Kanye used to be someone else. The bear's symbolism of a more innocent era, before all this havoc and controversy all came at the forefront. And man, do many people really miss that era. Like, comment, and subscribe. Later.